So just like addition, we're going to take a look at the decimal number subtraction by looking at place values. So this first one here, we have 378 minus 125. So we've lined up the digits, so 8 units, 7 tens, and 3 hundreds, and you're taking away 100, 2 tens, and 5 units. So 8 units, take away 5 units, will leave you with 3 units, 7 tens minus 2 tens will leave you with 5, 3 hundreds minus 100 will leave you with 200. So this answer would be 253. Pause the video and see if you can take this and apply that to 3.78 minus 1.25 and how that connects to the previous problem. So go ahead, pause the video. Don't use calculators because we're trying to teach you to observe something. So go ahead, pause. All right, if you've come back from pausing, it will be exactly the same principles, except each of the digits right now are in different place values. So the 3 instead of 100 is now in the units place. The 7, which was in tens place, now is in tenths place. 8, which was in the units place, is now in the hundreds place. And the same thing with 1.25, the digit values changed. But the process of subtraction will remain the same. So 8 hundredths minus 5 hundredths leave you with 3 hundredths. 7 tenths minus 2 tenths will leave you with 5 tenths. 3 units minus 1 unit will leave you with 2 units. So the answer would be uh, 2.53. You can see it's the exact same principle as the first one. The only difference was that the decimal point always is between units and tenths. So units and tenths place, you have to have a decimal point in decimal number system. All right, let's take a look at 857 minus 589. Go ahead, pause the video, and let's see what we can do, and then see if there's a difference between this problem and the previous problems. Go ahead, pause the video, and try it. All right, if you've come back, so here we have uh, hundreds, tens, units. We have seven units minus nine units, but we cannot take nine units from seven units. So we have five groups of tens. So what we're going to do is break that five as one plus four. We're going to take that one group of tens and move that so that it becomes the unit. So we'll have to unbundle and become 10 singletons. So one tens can be unbundled to become 10 singletons. So now we have 17 singletons and you're taking away 9, which will leave you with 8 singletons or units. But now we have 4 tens and you want to subtract 8 tens from it. So again, we're going to use our place value system. This 8 hundreds, we can break it as uh, 1 plus 7. That 100 is really 10 tens. So we can unbundle the 100 and push it over to the 10th spot and it will become 10 tens. So we have 10 tens plus 4 tens, 14 tens, and now we're subtracting 8 from it, which will leave you with 6 tens. Here we have 700 minus 500, which will leave you with 200. So our final answer will be 268. A very important question to ask then would be, Hmm, what happens if that 7 was a number smaller than 5? There is no more to borrow. How can we solve that problem? Which we will get to in a little bit. But the idea is that in addition, you had carryovers because you were bundling in groups of 10. And now we are unbundling so that we have groups of 10 moving over to a lower unit. And that allows us to do subtraction of decimal numbers. So let's see if we can use similar principles to extend our definition of decimal number subtraction to other objects. So here we have decimal number subtraction 846 minus 421. So if we write it in the expanded form, we have 800s, 410s, and 6. You're taking away 400s, 210s, and a singleton. So again, just like addition, we're going to do term by term subtraction. And so here we have 
8 minus 4 tenths, uh, 10 square, or 8 minus 4 hundredths, 4 minus 2 tenths, and 6 minus 1 singletons. So we're grouping them again in place values. Instead of making the tabular form like we did before, we're just writing it horizontally. And so our answer would be 8 minus 4, so that's 4 hundreds, 2 tens, and 5. So our final answer would be 425. Let's look at polynomial subtraction then. So look, if you have 8x squared plus 4x plus 6 minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, just like in addition, you're going to group groups of similar units. In this case, x squared, so we have 8x squared minus 4x squared, or 8 minus 4x squared, 4 minus 2x, and 6 minus 1 singletons, which will give 4x squared plus 2x plus 5. Look at the similarity. The only difference is tens are replaced with x's. All right, let's take a look and see if you can do this one on your own. Pause the video and see what you can do. Assuming you have come back, we will use the same principle. So again, combine like units. So 9 minus 7 hundreds, 4 minus 9 tenths, and 3 minus 6 singletons. So we have 2 hundreds, we have 4 minus 9, which will give you a negative 5 tenths, and 3 minus 6 gives you negative 3 singletons. So this is an interesting problem because we can't really write an answer as a decimal number right now because we have negative numbers floating around. So we're going to have to do borrow, but this time we're going to do it a little differently. So look, we have a negative 5 tenths. That means you borrowed 5 tenths. You are in debt. Here we have a negative 3. So we're going to have to borrow against the tenths again an additional time so that we can recoup this 3 and take care of it. It's like you're borrowing to give to somebody else. So we have negative 5 tens, so we are 5 tens in debt. If I borrow one more 10, that means I'll be negative 6 tens in debt. So I'll have uh, this negative 5 will become a negative 6 tens, so I can borrow a 10 to subtract the 3 that I got here. But then I'll have negative 6 tens debt, right? So I have to borrow, I, have, I am in positives in the red, two hundreds. So I'm going to break the two hundreds, keep one of the hundreds, and break the other hundred as ten groups of tens. And now I can borrow six from it, which will leave me with one hundred, ten minus six, or four tens, and then ten minus three, which is seven. So this is another way of looking at decimal number system as a borrowing example. So let's take a look at similar subtraction for polynomials. Again, 9 minus 7x squared, 4 minus 9x, and 3 minus 6 singletons. And so the answer will be 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. You can see how similar it is to the decimal number problem, except in the decimal number system, we had to borrow against things so that we can write our answer as a number, combine it together. Whereas here, you can really do combination of x squared and x terms for adding or subtracting. So that would be your final answer. So what observations have we made on four subtractions then right now? They are similar to the addition observations we made. That polynomial and decimal number subtractions are similar in that we are subtracting like terms. Right? But the dissimilarity is that in decimal numbers, we have to worry about borrowing from neighbor or unbundling. One or the other we have to do to make sure that we can actually perform the subtraction. And then also in polynomial subtraction, however, we cannot do that because we cannot borrow so many x squares to make x terms. So it's not necessary and we just end up on occasion with negative coefficients like in a previous example. All right, let's do some practice problems together then. Perform the subtractions below without using a calculator. And the reason we don't want you to use a calculator is because we're trying to learn 
similarities and differences between different type of subtraction problems so you can see the underlying principle and how it extends. We did this with addition, so now we're going to do it with subtraction. So go ahead, pause the video here and do the problems. Assuming you've come back to minus 15 will give us negative 13. Two dollars minus 15 dollars, you're going to be in debt, so it'll be negative 13 dollars. Two square root three minus 15 square root three will be what? Yep, negative 13 square root three. 2x squared minus 15x squared. Remember the caution, it will not be x to the 4 because you are subtracting like units and so it will remain negative 13x squared. We discussed why addition of x squared and x squared doesn't give you x to the 4 and same principle applies here because remember what we said, a negative 15 is really additive inverse of 15. So they will behave similarly. All right, try these on your own. Go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. Remember, don't get overwhelmed. If you feel overwhelmed just looking at the problems, cover them up. Just do one problem at a time. Take three deep breaths. Stay together, stay focused, don't be distracted. Again, make sure you are just doing math problems. Not distract with television, radio, music, cell phone, Facebook, Twitter. So many distractions possible. But we want you to just concentrate and really attend to what is in front of you. All right, let's discuss it. So remember, if you forgot, i is square root of negative 1. So we have 3 plus 4i. And you, so that's a complex number minus the complex number 5 plus 7i. So what should we do? We need to subtract 3 minus 5. So that will be 3 minus 5 and then 4 minus 7i's. So that's the like unit part. And so we have 3 minus 5, which is negative 2, 4 minus 7, which is negative 3i's. So our, again, like terms add together. We did before, now we are subtracting like terms. So the real parts are 3 and 5, so we're subtracting the real parts. 4 and 7 are imaginary parts, and you're subtracting the imaginary parts. So again, just subtraction of like units. So let's see what we got for f. Same thing, 3 cube root 4s minus 5 cube root 4s. So that will give you 3 minus 5 cube root 4s, and plus 4 minus 7 cube root, uh, 4 minus 7 square root 2s. And so that will end up with negative 2 cube root 4 minus 3 square root 2. So you can see that all of these answers are going to be similar to each other, except for the differences, what units they carry. So here we have negative 2 a to the power 2 thirds minus 3 b to the 4 fifths. Here we have negative 2 square root x minus 3 square root x plus 1. But all of them have negative 2 of something and negative 3 of some other thing. So that's the similarity that we're noticing here. So before we go on to more problems, let's just take a look at how you could visualize addition and subtraction of complex numbers. Remember, when we add decimal numbers, you move on the number line. So 2 plus 3 would be 2, and then you go 1, 2, 3, and you'll end up with 5. If you were subtracting, you go to the left. So 2 minus 3 would be, so you have 2, and then you are traveling 3 to the left. So 1, 2, 3, and you'll end up with negative 1. What happens if you have addition or subtraction of complex numbers? So let's take a look. Do you recall from module 1 how to graph 2 plus 3i? 2 is the real part, 3 is the imaginary part. So real axis is on the horizontal axis here. Imaginary axis is this vertical axis. So 2 on the horizontal and 3 vertically up. So right here is your coordinate in the complex plane 2 plus 3i. To it, we are adding 4 plus 5i. So we have our 2 plus 3i coordinate, 
adding four in the real part means that you want to take this and go four in the positive direction. So one, two, three, four. So that will get six in the real axis. We also want to do five in the imaginary axis. So you would go five up. One, two, three, four, five. And you'll end up with eight for the imaginary component. And so you can see how the addition works. Let's take a look at subtraction. Similar concept, so 2 plus 3i is the same point that we started with before, except now we're subtracting 4 from the real component. So 4 to the left, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 from the imaginary component subtraction. So that means we have to go four, 5 down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you will land here. So you can see how addition and subtraction for complex numbers has a visual component. On a side note, let's talk about one more concept. So do you remember how when we were looking at number lines, we had a concept of absolute value, and that was distance of the decimal number from zero. So for example, absolute value of two is two, absolute value of negative 2 is also 2 because they are both exactly 2 units away from 0. So for decimal numbers or for real numbers, the absolute value of A is the distance of A from 0. So it's always a positive number. And so how can we define absolute value for complex numbers? So let's talk about this point that we had before. So we have 2 plus 3i, which is this point right here, as we've seen before. If you wanted to define the absolute value of that number, so instead of just 0, we now are in a coordinate system, so we would want distance of that point from 0, 0, which is our origin. So in the plane, the shortest distance between two points is if you connect them with the line segment, so the length of this line segment. So take a look. We have, this is a hypotenuse of this right triangle that is formed between 0 to 2, 2 to 3 that you see here. And so we know how to find that by using Pythagorean theorem, right? So 2 square plus 3 square, square root of that which in this case square root 13 is going to be defined as absolute value of 2 plus 3i. So the concept of absolute value for a complex number a plus bi is the square root of square of the real part plus square of the imaginary part and that simply is just using the Pythagorean theorem here so it be 2 squared plus 3 squared 4 plus 9 13 square root 13 is this distance right here. Pause the video here and try this problem on your own. All right, so here we have square root sevens. So let's present the first solution. Two square root seven minus 13 square root seven. So that's the red boxes. And so that'll give us negative 11 square root sevens. The green represent your counting cube root fives. So three cube root fives minus 7 cube root 5 will give you negative 4 cube root 5s. So this is an acceptable way to write if you need to do something to highlight which are the like units. Another way, just like in addition problems, you can underline them with single or double bars or how many more bars you need so you understand that which are the like terms and are you taking care of them. If you wrote it like this where you're crossing things out, again I'll repeat when we did addition, do not cross things out. It is not acceptable because crossing out means it's gone. But it's not gone. It combined with another quantity. So instead of that, you could, you could cross things out in form I as only column. That is acceptable. And then on the left-hand side, your work is all clean and without crossing things out. Or you can just do term by term, all the square root sevens, all the cube root fives and then bring your answer here in the normal column. So you can use for my eyes only column whenever you want. Now, you don't have to do any of these things. 
you could just in your head combine like terms and write final answer. But for many who cannot perform things like that in their heads for whatever, maybe you have a learning disability of some kind, it does not matter. Remember, you are on your own here learning. Pause the video as much as you need. There is no time limit on how long it takes for somebody to grasp or process. There is also, all these things are designed so you can pick the way you learn because all brains are different. So figure out what works for you. Underline, circling, colored pens for my is only column. Please use correct mathematical terminology and notation. Writing and presentation is extremely important because that reflects what is happening in your head. All right, let's work on cultivating growth mindset again. Remember, if you always have a right or wrong problem, it's very defeating if you get it wrong. So we are going to design problems for you here so that there are multiple answers and not just one right answer, at least for some of them. So fill in the blanks to make it a true statement. So here we are giving you the answer and we're saying this first polynomial minus some other polynomial gives you this answer. Could you fill in the blanks for the other polynomial? So it's like 15x squared minus something is giving you 12x squared. What do you think that something is? Go ahead, pause the video here and see if you can come up with the answer. Then, of course, we'll discuss it. Go on, try it. Remember, there is no harm in trying, right? What's the worst that will happen that you got it wrong? People are so afraid of making mistakes that you don't even want to give your brain a chance. Go ahead, try. Really, just please do try and feel something. It does not matter if you got it right or not. We will discuss it soon enough so you will see what you got, whether it makes sense or not. Whatever answer you put, please make sure you understand why you are putting it there. Sometimes when you ask a student why did you write the answer, they'll say, I don't know. But that is not a good answer because you are the only one who knows why you write what you write. Nobody else can know that. So become conscious of your thinking process and your logic. All right, so here we have 15 minus 3 will give me 12x squared. 10 minus 7 will give me a plus 3. And 7 minus 5 will give me a plus 2. So here there's only one correct answer because nothing else, if you uh, subtract any less or more, you'll get a different answer. But let's take a look at this next one. Again, pause the video, see what you can do. Now you have infinitely many possibilities for the two blanks. But once you pick the first blank, the second blank will be fixed. So go ahead, try it on your own. Pause the video, see what you can do. Doesn't hurt to try, come on, let's try. Let's do a sample one, maybe if you're really, really, really stuck. All right, take a look. We have negative 11 x squared. So let's make up any number. Pick a number. It doesn't really matter. So many x squared. So I'll make something up. 7 x squared plus 4 x plus 2. So I need to figure out 7 minus something is giving me negative 11 x squared. So clearly it has to be bigger than 7, right? So what do you think it should be? It's some 18 because 7 minus 18 is 11. So I have negative 18, and then 7 minus 18 gives me negative 11 x squared. 4 minus 9 gives me negative 5, and 2 minus 11 gives me negative 9. So that is one possibility. It depends on what numbers I pick. Go ahead, try another one on your own then. All right, let me give you another example. What if I put 4x squared plus 3x and I throw in a negative 5? All right, so 4 minus what will give me negative 11? So you can see that I would have to have 15 because the 4 minus 15 is 11x squared. 3 minus 8x is negative 5x. Negative 5 minus 4 will give me negative 9. So there are infinitely many possible choices here. So I would like you to start thinking about answers to the first and the second problem. Are they unique? 
what other possibilities can there be? We already said that in the first one, since the first blank is fixed, you don't have a choice. The second blank has to be 3x squared plus 7x plus 5. But in the other problem, in the second one, since both blanks are open, infinitely many possibilities are there. So see if you can come up with a couple more on your own. Before we've done decimal number subtractions and we talked about borrowing from a neighbor if you didn't have enough. So the idea is like units. We did replace tens with x's, did polynomial subtraction. So here we have a problem 5 foot 3 inches minus 1 foot 10 inches. See if you can pause the video here and attempt the problem on your own before we discuss it together. So assuming you have come back from pause, let's recall what one foot is. One foot we know is what? 12 inches, good. One foot is 12 inches and we have to borrow 10 inches from three inches, which we cannot do. So remember in base 10 subtraction, what did we do? We borrowed one. Here when we borrow one foot, it's not going to be 10, it's going to be 12 inches. So the 5 feet 3 inches really can be broken as 4 feet plus 1 foot, which you see right here, and that 1 foot is actually 12 inches. So if you borrow that 1 foot, you're going to have 12 inches and 3 inches, which is 15 inches, which will allow you to then do subtraction. So let's carry over the 1 foot and that made it 12 inches. So 15 inches minus 10 inches will give you 5. 4 feet minus 1 foot will give you 3 feet. So our final answer will be 3 feet 5 inches. All right, let's take a look at this next problem. 5 weeks, 3 days, 5 hours, 23 minutes minus 4 weeks, 6 days, 19 hours, 53 minutes. You might be asking, why in the heck would I have to do a problem like that? But let's imagine that you have something exciting coming, like a vacation, and you're counting your days. So you knew that we, you have to wait for five weeks, three days, five hours, 23 minutes before you can go on your vacation or a cruise. You already waited four weeks, six days, 19 hours, 53 minutes. So you want to know how long you still have before you can go do your exciting vacation or a cruise or whatever it is you're waiting for. So pause the video here, see what you can do on your own, and then we will come back and discuss it. You may want to use that one week is seven days, one day is 24 hours, one hour is 60 minutes. So go ahead and attempt the problem on your own. So instead of having to write week, days, hours, minutes in words like that, I'm going to use variables. So five weeks, three days, five hours, 23 minutes. Take away 53 minutes from 23 minutes. We can't do that. There's not enough minutes. But I can borrow an hour from the five hours, make that a four hours and 60 minutes. Then I'll have enough minutes to subtract. So let's do that with all three of these quantities and see what happens. So I have my 23 minutes. I'm going to take the five hours and write that as four hours, and the one hour I'm going to uh, change it into minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes. Now I have 19 hours to take away from the four hours, which I don't have enough of, so I'm going to break the days. I'm going to write the three days as two days plus one whole day, which is 24 hours. Now I have enough hours. Now I subtract days, six days, but I only have two, so I'm going to break the weeks five weeks to four weeks, and the one week is seven days. So this five weeks got broken into four weeks and seven days. Now I can perform my subtraction. So before I can do that, let's just combine and make sure we have enough of the minutes, hours, and days. So four weeks is four weeks, seven days and two days. Again, adding like terms, see how that's coming in here, is nine days. 24 hours and four hours is 28 hours. 60 minutes and 23 minutes is 83 minutes. Okay, so now let's do our subtraction. So the four weeks minus four weeks, nine days minus six days, 28 hours minus 19 hours, 83 minutes minus 53 minutes. So when we do the subtraction, again, 
Remember, you can only add or subtract like terms. So 4 minus 4, which will give me 0 weeks. 9 minus 6 days will give me 3 days. 28 minus 19 hours will give me 9 hours. 83 minus 53 minutes is 30 minutes. Another way to write 30 minutes is half hour. So you could say 3 days and 9 and a half hours. Or 3 days, 9 hours, and 30 minutes. Another way we could have done it is this way. And this is going to resemble very closely to your decimal number system subtraction. So pay very careful attention. So we have weeks, days, hours, minutes, columns. I cannot take away 53 minutes from 23 minutes. So I'm going to chop the 5 hours to 4 hours, borrow the 1 hour, which is 60 minutes. And 60 plus 23 minutes will give me 83 minutes. So I have 83 minutes, and I can do the subtraction. But now here I have 4 hours minus 19 hours. I cannot do, so I'm going to borrow uh, here. So I'm going to make this two days. I'm going to borrow one day, which is 24 hours. 24 plus the original 4 hours, which gave me 28 hours. Now I can do this subtraction. Now I have 2 days, subtract 6 days, which I cannot do, right? So I have to borrow one from here then. So we're going to take away the 5, make it 4 weeks. 1 week is 7 days. 7 plus the 2 days left over from before were 9 days. Now I can do the subtraction of 9 minus 6. So now everything is in place, and we can do our subtraction. So 83 minus 53 is 30. 28 minus 19 is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3. 4 minus 4 is 0. So our final answer is 3 days, 9 hours, uh, 30 minutes, or 3 days, 9 and a half hours. For this next set of problems, see if you can identify the like units and then take care of the addition or subtraction as required. Be cognizant of what operation you're working on and what units you are combining together. Do not multiply things out. So pause the video here. Use the like units to add or subtract. So here, we don't want you to multiply the two using distributive property of multiplication over addition. Identify the like unit first. So here, our like unit is going to be, what do you think? Yes, very good, x plus 1. So then we have 2x plus 1s minus 7x plus 1s. So that would give you negative 5x plus 1s. Next problems, again, identify the like units and then combine the like terms. So pause the video here and see if you can attempt the next two problems on your own. So go ahead, try on your own. All right, assuming you've come back, what do you think is the unit in this next one? Again, x plus 1 is the unit, but 2 and a cannot be combined together. So we're going to have to write that as 2 minus a copies of x plus 1. What about this next one here? 3 square root 2x plus 1 minus 7 square root 2x plus 1. All right, let's see. So here, what do you think? The unit is square root 2x plus 1. 3 of them minus 7 of them. 3 minus 7 will end up with negative 4 square root 2x plus 1. All right, so now let's see if you can do this next set. Pause the video here and see if you can attempt on your own. Again, make sure you're looking at like units. So in this next one, 3 squared 2x minus 5x. So here we have x is our unit. So we are going to have to write this as what? We cannot combine them. So 3 squared 2 minus 5x's. In the next one, a minus b seems to be our unit. And so our final answer will have to be 3 minus u minus v times a minus b. Pause the video here and see if you can attempt the next two on your own. Don't get overwhelmed, but just attempt. All right, so in order to get unstuck, we're going to have you read the problem out loud, but many of you might start judging yourself. Remember our message, kindness, compassion, non-judgment to yourself will get your way out. 
So even if you read the problem out loud, if you're still stuck, let's do an experiment. Close your eyes. Don't make me say it again. Really, close your eyes. Even if you got it, close your eyes. Answer as fast as you can to questions I'm asking you with closed eyes. Ready? 2 minus 2. X minus X. 10 minus 10. 50 minus 50. 100 minus 100. Square root X minus square root X. Vigigi minus Vigigi. All right. Open your eyes. Did any answer pop into your head? Were you able to answer? Give me an answer to the questions I was asking. You are correct. It was zero. Zero is what popped into your head. And that is the answer to the question in front of us, isn't it? So if you looked, listen to how we read out loud. Square root 5a p plus q minus a square root 5a p plus q. It is exactly like the problems you were doing with closed eyes. 2 minus 2x minus x. Same quantity. Subtract same quantity is always going to give you 0, which is the additive identity, isn't it? Because square root 5a p plus q and negative square root 5a p plus q are additive inverses of each other. So your final answer is going to be 0. Let's talk about the next problem. So you're combining 9 centimeters minus 4 centimeters, 5 minus 3 square centimeters to get 5 centimeters plus 2 square centimeters. 